Hi, I'm Austin. I'm the lead design consultant at Gravity Sketch, and I'm going to be doing this video for you today. I'm going to go through a couple of workflows that show how to make some midsoles in a couple of different ways. Now, you can already see in here that I have imported a last, and I have put that last on a locked layer. So this is my last layer here, and you can also see that if I highlight the layer, it tells me that the last is on there. And then um, this other layer here, and you can name these whatever you want. I might name this sketch. Um, and on this layer, I have created some basic wireframes for what I want my midsole to follow. And those I'm just gonna use to guide myself on what I want uh, my midsole to be. So the first step is I'm gonna make sure that I have my last layer locked. I'm probably gonna turn it on a lower transparency just so that I can kind of see what I'm doing here with the midsole. And the first way that I'm going to show you um, how to make this midsole is with bridging curves. So on these curves, you can see the amount of edit points that I have is not a drastic amount of points. Um, and that is purposefully because you want to start more simple instead of starting with something that has a thousand points. It's just going to make it a lot harder. So I made sure that all my points are relatively simple and that the points on both sides are matching so that there's the same amount of points on each side. Now, um, and it's the same with the bottom as well. These points also match with the points on the top so that it's going to be really easy for me to start with surfacing. Now, the first way that I'm going to show you how to do this is with our surface tool. We have a bridge curves option here, which is um, the icon on the bottom left hand side and the bridge curves will act as a bridge between the curves. I'm also gonna make sure to turn my tension all the way off because I want a flat surface for now and I can add some curve in later. Um, and I'm gonna turn on full curve here. And I'm also gonna make sure that what I do is in sub D and that's just gonna allow me to make sure that I'm merging or I'm able to merge and modify the surface in the ways that I'm going, that I want. The first thing to do when you're on this is press the front trigger on your non-drawing hand. That is going to give you a preview of what your surface size is going to be. And you can see as I bring my remotes farther away and bring them closer, that it's changing the size of this surface preview. While I'm holding that button on my left hand trigger, I'm going to highlight the lines that I want to bridge between. And you can see that both of these lines are highlighting. One is in red and one is in purple. The reason one is in red is that's our standard highlight. The purple is because I have this object grouped and any group line ends up um, in a purple color. Now, because I have full curve on, all I have to do while I'm hovering over these two lines is press down on my right hand trigger and then let go. And that's going to bridge this entire curve all at once. So that is a really, really easy way to surface. And now you can see that the amount of points here line up with the amount of points that I have on the curves themselves. Now, because these curves aren't looped all the way around, there's two separate curves. And I did that because I wanted to um, do my lateral and medial side mirrored. I'm going to just have to do the same thing on the other side and ta-da, I have both sides. And because I have sub D on, I can now take this, press the tools button on my drawing hand and go to the merge button and just merge these two surfaces. And all I have to do is make sure those points connect and voila, they are connected. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the front and connect the points. Now, if I accidentally move this surface off my line, that's no big deal. I can just go to snap and then snap the point back to the surface that I want. Um, you'll note though, however, that if you snap directly to your curve, it might go slightly off of the curve and that's just because I don't have a ton of points here. So I'm just gonna pull it off a little bit to make it match the curve how I like. Now, that was a really fast sidewall surface. From here, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to turn off my sketch layer. I'm gonna make a new layer actually and I'm gonna throw my surfaces on that new layer and then I'm gonna turn my sketch layer off temporarily. 
And I'm doing this just so I can work really well with this surface and see what it's doing. Now I'm gonna ex start extruding the bottom here. And the first thing that you have to do when extruding um, from the side is to grab an edge with your grab sphere on your drawing hand and just press the front trigger on your drawing hand and that will extrude that single edge. I'm gonna bring that edge forward and this method that I'm gonna do is what we kind of call internally the keystone method. And because basically what we're doing is extruding these edges to make little, um, rectangles very similar to how you would build like a stone wall. So what you're going to make sure that you're doing while you're extruding is that you're making rectangles here with four points on each side as you extrude. So each edge I'm taking and I'm snapping these points together with their little friends and these points will automatically snap when you are extruding and placing them next to each other where there's a perfect quad. So you can see each time I make these and join them, there are these rectangles that I'm creating. So here I'm going to join this and keep going as I move through the rest of the outsole. Now, when you get to the toe area, this is something where you need to make sure that you always have four points. And if the points align, it is perfect. And you've got um, all of these four point pieces. So now I have my entire midsole closed on the bottom. And you'll see one thing that happens is it softens the edge here at the bottom. It makes it a more round object. So if I turn my layers back on, my sketch layer back on, you'll see that there's a gap here. Now, if you want a harder edge there, it's a very simple fix. And this is something that I generally do um, you know, once I'm sure that this is the shape of the midsole I want, because the more loops you add, the more editing um, gets complicated, but you can just add an additional edge loop down towards the bottom by pressing your front trigger um, while hovering over the vertices, and it adds that additional edge loop to bring that hardness back. The more edge loops you add, the harder that edge will be. Now, I can also do the same thing in the middle here and add an additional edge loop that allows me to modify the shape of this outsole. You can do that with individual points, or one thing that I really like to do is highlight the entire edge loop by hovering over one edge and pressing my non-drawing hand trigger, and then grabbing that and maybe using my toggle to left and right on my drawing hand to kind of... Uh, flare that out a little bit. And then I can go in and do any individual modification that I want um, to how I want this midsole to flare out. I didn't do the most accurate version of that midsole flare. Um, so you can, cause it's kind of a trick on how great you are with holding the remotes. And there you go. I've kind of got my midsole flared the amount that I want. And then you'll see here that this is a super hard edge because I added so many edge loops. I decided, you know what? I don't actually want the edge to be that hard. So I can just go in, highlight this entire edge loop and hit the minus on my drawing hand and that subtracts one of the edge loops. And then I can kind of take my points in this back, say I want the back heel section to not be as hard, but I want the sidewall to be more hard. I can just separate those points a little bit. So now I have the midsole in the first way that you are going to create one. That is option one. Option two, I'm just gonna delete this and start over. So option two is using the ribbon tool. The ribbon tool is inside your stroke menu. When you go there, you have this ribbon stroke option on the very right hand side um, of the bottom where you can change this, the shapes of your stroke. And I'm gonna make that ribbon tool kind of start in this uh, middle size here. And I'm gonna turn on sub D so that it's immediately sub D when I'm working with it. You'll note I also have point mode on because that's gonna make it a lot easier for me to control where I want my ribbon tool. And now I'm just gonna press the front trigger on my drawing hand to go through and add points as I wish. So this is something where I'm doing basically the same process as bridge curves, except for I am going through and manually making this stroke all the way around. You can just basically bring your points together and it will 
merge the entire surface. So here, I now have to take the, these points because I was really, uh, you know, not precise with the way that I was making that. And I turned on my snap tool and start snapping my points to where my line is. So this is something that you can take those points, snap them all in really quickly, and it might make the surface look a little bit different than what my lines are because in sub D it's using the tension of the points, how much tension on each point to decide um, where that comes in. So now that I've snapped everything, I'm just gonna turn off my snap and I'm gonna go in and adjust these points to be closer to what I actually want and just use my wireframe as a guide. So this is a way to do it where it's a little bit less precise, but it's really fast for the ideation. And this is a way also, you don't even need to have a wireframe if you're doing the stroke, um, the surfacing this way. You could even start with just the surface and have no wireframe at all. So if I turn this off, you could just be starting with just your surface and deciding from here, how do I want my outsole to look? Do I want it to flare out a little bit more there? Do I want it to be a really, really big section in the heel and come in closer at the lateral and medial sides? Um, you know, these are all choices you can make in the surfacing, like while going through and surfacing, which is really fun. It's super easy and tangible. And then you go in the bottom and close it the same way that um, we did before where I'm going through and just merging these. Now with this one, I have so few points that it's really, really fast to merge this, which is great and awesome. But then you'll notice that the, um, I'm actually gonna add one more loop there so that there's a quad, cause quads are very important. Um, so now you'll see that that was super fast, but then this uh, outsole surface is cur in one, simple curve all the way across. So I can go in and add another layer if I want, and I can take that edge loop and pull it out, pull it in, do whatever I want here. You can add as many loops as you want. I just um, always tell people to be careful with how many loops you're adding in the beginning because the more loops and points you add, the harder it is to edit. And you'll notice sometimes when you're adding more loops, it will auto add those loops. And so you might have to come in and adjust um, a little bit. But that is the second way to make a midsole. Very easy, quick as well. Now the third way to go about making a midsole is starting with primitive objects. So here I'm actually gonna start with a cube. Um, and for this cube, I'm just gonna make a cube randomly in the middle of my space. And then I'm gonna take this cube and move it over kind of close to where I want. And I'm gonna adjust the shape to kind of fit what, what I'm hoping for here. Um, and this cube's not in sub D yet. So I'm just taking this cube in the basic way that it was created. And I'm even gonna like shove it up a little bit and you know make that kind of intersect my last. And then I'm gonna take it and turn it into sub D. So now I have a sub D cube here. Um, my subdivision level is off, even though this surface is in sub D. So if I want it to be round and not have those hard edges, I'm gonna turn the sub D on. Now that's gonna make my cube this crazy uh, oblong shape. And that's because I only have four points. So it's only using those four points to decide how it wants to smooth and curve between things. So from here, I'm gonna just add additional points. Um, you know, the more points you add, the harder those edges are, just kind of how I had said before. And you can add your points wherever you feel, wherever you, uh, you know, decide is best. Now, in this case, because I'm starting from a primitive shape, I am going to turn on my wireframe as reference because that's something I generally like to do, just to show you how easy it is to kind of take a primitive shape and make it what you want. So I'm gonna take this shape, bring it up a little bit, and now you can kind of see that I have kind of what I want, but not exactly, right? Obviously these points are in the wrong spot. So I'm gonna go through and move some of these points to work with the lines that I have and kind of create the shape by hand that I'm looking for. So here I can see, like if I bring this in, I definitely need another row over here to make it um, work with the ball, the size of the ball that I want. 
Um, and you can choose while you're going through if you want this to be super freehand or if you want to use smart move. Because I sometimes am like, oh, I like where that is on the x axis or on the vertical axis, but I don't like where it is um, from an aerial view. So I often use smart move in these cases as well. And I might even bring all these in again using smart move. And then I can um, bring this in as well, kind of adjusting my points as I see fit to match what I'm looking for. So I'm just going through um, manually and kind of adjusting this shape to be fun and exciting how, how I want it to be. Now again, if you want those hard edges, that's where I'm adding this additional edge loop at the bottom. And I'm gonna bring all of my points up to match the shape from my wireframe. And again, this is a process where you don't have to have a wireframe. You can just play around with form here and um, decide like how you want things to look just visually without a wireframe. Um, it's all based on your personal preference and um, how you like to do things uh, while you're designing. And another thing I'll note that one of the reasons why people like to start with primitive shapes as one of their objects is because now I don't even have to close this bottom, right? This bottom's already closed. So that is just kind of like a speed feature, even though the process is slightly more manual to get the shape to be where you want it to be, that bottom and the top are closed. So that is a really, really fun and easy way to do things. Um, and you can again go through and I now have that midsole kind of what I wanted, um, you know, and I could decide to go in and again, add that additional layer in the middle and flare that out a bit if that's what I'm looking for. Or I can decide that I want it to be a straight sidewall, but I think I want this flared a little bit and I'm just taking my points and adjusting them to be how I would like. And then you can also grab huge groups of points and bring those in together if the toe like got off or something like that. So that is the third way to make a midsole.